Thank you for watching our video. Please give us a big like, subscribe to our channel for new videos every day with amazing cars. Leave us your opinion in the comment section on the video. Thank you. A semi truck from the United States Postal Service is stuck on an icy hill. It was valiantly trying to live up the USPS's mantra neither snow nor rain nor heat nor gloom of night stays these couriers from the swift completion of their appointed rounds and failing miserably. Packages were set to be delayed, or even more horrifyingly, not delivered at all. But then a Tesla Model X, the all wheel drive electric crossover, pulls up on the scene. This isn't a tow truck, you scoff, likely to nobody else since you're watching YouTube. The wing doored van crossover gets hooked up to the tractor trailer and pulls the damn thing up the hill, saving people from having to ask Alexa to reorder batteries that are now in a ditch somewhere off the side of the highway. The video description does make it clear that the Tesla isn't really a hero, that it couldn't win a tractor pull or drag a 747 down a runway. Instead it shows that it was best able to take advantage of the slippery surface with its instant to work hand, more importantly, its excellently smart traction control, to assist the tractor trailer on its climb. Thing is, people don't read video descriptions. Tesla fans and haters, vocal groups who don't necessarily need facts to form an opinion, praise the Model X's towing prowess or denigrate it as a faked stunt. But behind all of those opinions, the Model X does have the makeup of an effective snow machine. Especially a P100D. This is the Model X you see, again on YouTube, beating supercars down the quarter mile. That's because it has a 100 kWh battery, electric motors front and rear, one gear, an instant torque. And a lot of it. The Model X makes 603 horsepower and 713 pounds to foot of torque. Tesla says this P100D will get to 60 in just 2.9 seconds, an astounding figure when you consider that the Model X weighs 5,400 pounds and can seat 7 adults. This is a minivan that's as quick as a McLaren 570S. And it's better in the snow, particularly when it's on the correct tires. The night before a March storm that was supposed to dump another foot or two of snow, Tesla called to ask if we'd be interested in taking a Model X out into New York City during the blizzard to see how it would perform. The Northeast has been having hellacious late winter storms the last few years, the sort of storms that ruin a nice February heat wave with 15 inches of snow. The storms that make people claim there is no such thing as climate change because it's snowing in March, even though it was 65 degrees two days before. This storm was different. It started as a bust, just slushy snow and rain, the sort of stuff that is more of an annoyance than an actual issue. The most perilous part was stepping off a curb into a puddle that did soak through your shoes, make your socks wet, and ruin your day. It also wasn't really a test for any car's snowworthiness. New York drivers still freaked out. They went 12 or 112 miles per hour no in between. None were on the correct tires. They either swerved all over the road to avoid the gigantic potholes or ran right through them, black Camrys absorbing the brunt of the impacts while the drivers shouted into calls over Bluetooth. When we picked up photographer Dave Burnett, he was in full rain gear prepared more to be soaked than snowed on. Through it all, the Model X remained eerily serene. At low speeds, you're insulated from any and all road noise, and since it's electric, have you heard that Teslas are electric? There's nothing mechanical for you to hear anyway. My passengers are looking at Facebook, Snapchat, and other social media platforms that have long outlived their usefulness. The only real sign that it's gross out are the windshield wipers working overtime to slap the slushy mess off the car. Where other cars can still feel skittish in these conditions even if they're on snow tires the Model X was composed, uneventful, stoic, even. I attribute that to proper tires, Pirelli Scorpion winters, and the low center of gravity granted by heavy batteries. Like driving an electric cinder block. There wasn't one iota of concern that the Model X would have an issue. That's good, because while you can put the traction control into a slip mode to rock it free if it's stuck, it's impossible to fully disable it or the stability control. 
The only way, or so I've heard, is to unplug a number of sensors from the wheels in order to confuse the car into spinning its tires. But there was no way I was climbing under the Model X to rip off electronics and freezing garbage slush rain. The electronic systems would have to stay on. This also wouldn't be a good time to test autopilot or ludicrous mode. Due to the weather conditions, autopilot wouldn't function. As explained when I picked up the car, if the array of sensors can't see the lane lines, the cars around it, or really anything, then the function will not be allowed to work for safety reasons. Smart, particularly because if there are people who think it's okay to climb into the back seat while these semi-autonomous technologies are active, then there are people who think it'd work just fine in a nice storm. Ludicrous mode, on the other hand, is not restricted in weather conditions. While you just don't have the grip for a 2.9 second run to 60, it doesn't really matter. Matting the gas, throttle, accelerator, battery depleter. In the Model X from a standstill in the snow gets you a little bit of slip and then a hell of a lot of speed. That little bit of slip is nearly imperceptible, just a quick loss of traction from the wheels before they scramble and find grip again. After hours with Burnett, driving all over Brooklyn to find the snowiest possible spot and hoping for a sudden transformation of the storm, all we got was a preponderance of slush with the occasional snowflake. As we dropped him off, it started to snow a little harder, but not enough to make him get back in the car. We should have had him get back in the car. Within 10 minutes, the storm changed from bus to real to dangerous. Roads went from wet to totally snow covered. Snow was falling at a cartoonish rate, blanketing the disgusting sluggy mess with pure, heavy white stuff. Lincoln Town cars spun tires on the side of the road. Camrys, Accords, and other Uberish cars hogged lanes, driving slowly, wishing their wiper blades were new. Delivery bikes slid all over the place, getting burritos to people who refused to leave dingy studio apartments. The Model X? Like butter. In a good way. Is this a bad analogy? It seems like a bad analogy. Let me start again. Imagine a silent Range Rover. That's how the Model X did in snow around the city. Granted, the winter tires were a big help, but what was a challenge for any car was an on issue for me. Once back through the Holland Tunnel, I realized a couple things. First, we should have spent the whole time in Jersey, because it looked like it had been snowing for a year and we would have really been able to test the capabilities. Second, the programming on the Tesla's stability and traction control is secretly impressive. You can drive like a total moron and the Tesla won't take any of it. Give it big swings of the wheels, aggressive throttle applications, or really anything else dumb you can think of, and it'll shut you down and stay on the road. No, this isn't fun. If you were hoping that it'd let you slide around and be a loon, your hopes will go unanswered. The whole point here is that it's safe, and that's a rousing success. But it's not without frustrations in bad weather. The impressively cool Falcon Wing rear doors can't be opened or closed as quickly as regular doors, meaning that passengers can get soaked or caked in snow as the doors take their sweet time closing. Heavy winds can confuse the doors and keep them open longer than you want. Cold temperatures deplete the battery quicker than you'd hope, though that's true of all electric cars. The interior fogs up easily and the defrosters take a while to get everything back to normal. It cost $160,000, which isn't really connected to the weather but is just a lot of money in general. And then there's the massive windshield. The X has the largest windshield of any production car, but the windshield wipers aren't the largest. They're a standard size. That means there's a large part of the windshield they can't clear. Not really an issue because you can see where you're going, right? Well, the area above the windows is raked in such a way that it cakes with snow, and as you accelerate or brake it slides down or up the windshield. It's not a safety hazard. It's not a mechanical flaw. But it is annoying and it tricks you into thinking you're looking through a small slit of a windshield, when in reality you have as much area as any other schmo on the road. Put those quibbles aside. First, 
The performance of the Tesla is a testament to modern tire technology and the reminder that without a tire for the conditions, your car is going to be worthless junk. It's also a testament to computer programming and how well versed in F traction control Tesla's engineers are. Not only did they build a minivan SUV crossover thing that can get to 60 in 2.9 seconds, but they made one that you can floor in a snowstorm and only get the bare minimum of wheel spin. One that cuts power at the right time so you make a corner without losing all of your forward momentum. It's programming that makes me think a lot of manufacturers could take a lesson from Tesla. This might be the most impressive achievement from one of Elon Musk's companies, other than, you know, sending stuff into space. The Tesla made a storm covered incessantly by local news into a non-event. It was so undramatic that I didn't stop to think about how it did it all unflappably, not even a hint of flapping or being flapped. Instead, in a storm that left trees down, multiple feet of snow on the ground, and hundreds of thousands without power, one of the newest, highest tech cars on the road made me forget all about it. Thank you for watching our video, please give us a big like, subscribe to our channel for new videos every day with amazing cars. Leave us your opinion in the comment section on the video. Thank you.